Hello everyone, in this video we'll be building a simple full stack app using nhost serverless platform as our backend and vanilla javascript for our frontend. If you are mostly a frontend developer or someone who needs a quick backend solution, this video is for you. Let me first show you the features of the app that we are going to build. It's a simple contest website where anybody can submit their project to participate in the contest. Only the admin will be able to log in and view all the submitted projects and select one winner which will then appear on the home page. Let me just type some details and show it to you. Submit. And yeah, your project is submitted. Wait for the results. That's what it says. Now, as an admin, I can log in to view the project details. And here we go. We have the latest project that we just submitted and all the others below that. On the last date of the contest, the admin can browse through this list and select any one project as the winner. Let me go for this one. Click on select winner. And now we see that new project here is selected as the winner and the button is gone. So this action cannot be undone. Now let me sign out. And if we go back to the home page, you can see that the winner is announced. This is visible to the public. So the contest is over and the form no longer appears. This is a very simple app, but even to build something as simple as this, you need to learn one of the backend technologies to interact with the database and handle user authentication for the admin part. And you also need to manage the hosting server and so much more. Good news, with a serverless backend like Enhost, all of this is a lot easier. Serverless doesn't mean there's no server. It just means you don't have to worry about maintaining it, scaling it, etc. This video is sponsored by Enhost, which is an open source alternative to Firebase by Google. You can go to nhost.io and get started along with me. Before you proceed, don't forget to start the project on GitHub so that more developers can find and benefit from this platform. Ready? Let's go. Let me take a minute to talk about the complete tech stack we'll be using today. Enhost uses PostgreSQL as the database, GraphQL as the query language to interact with the database using Hasura, which is a lightweight open source GraphQL engine. You don't need to know anything about any of these three to follow along. We learn the basics as we go, but basic knowledge of relational databases would be required. Now for the front end, I will be using vanilla JS so that you understand the core concepts very well. Once you do that, you can use any of your favorite frameworks like React or Next.js or Vue to build your own project. However, I'll be using Veet as our build tool to make it easier to develop with Vanilla.js. You don't need any previous knowledge of Veet also to follow this tutorial. And I'll be using Tailwind CSS for styling just because it's quick, but you can skip it entirely and use regular CSS. It's up to you. In the end, we'll see how to build the front-end part for production and host it on Netlify through GitHub. Let's get started. Head over to nhost.io and sign up for a free account. I already have one, so I'll sign in with GitHub. Uh, if you're signing in for the first time, you'll see a default workspace. You can create a new project. Give it a project name. Let me call it Project Contest and leave everything else as it is. You can probably change the region if you're closer to any of these locations. I'll select Mumbai, India. Choose the starter plan for getting started. You can upgrade later whenever you wish to. Create project. This does take about two minutes as it suggests here. Once done, you'll see the project dashboard. Now for continuous deployment, let's create a GitHub repository and link it to this project. So head over to your GitHub account, create new repository. Let me again call it project contest. You can keep it private if you wish to and create repository. Now from nhost, connect to GitHub. 
configure the Enhost application on GitHub and it asks where do you want to install, select your account. Only select repositories, that's what I want to do. Select the repository project contest and install. Connection complete, you can close this tab and now you'll be able to see that repository here on Enhost. Connect. Keep this as it is and connect repository. All right, the setup is done. On this project dashboard, you'll find the documentation for using Enhost with any of your favorite frameworks. Note that there is no vanilla JavaScript, so you have no option but to watch this video. You'll also find other useful docs down below. Let's see what we have on the left. First, we have the database, which is a very newly added feature by Enhost. You can create your tables directly from here. Give the name, columns, and create table. We'll come back to this. Next, we have the GraphQL interface. You can type your queries and test them out here. Then we have the Hasura console, which actually combines the above two here and some more features. We'll be using this a lot. If you want to see what it looks like, if you've never seen a Hasura console, uh, copy the admin secret, open Hasura, and paste that secret and hit enter. Yeah, this is what it looks like and we'll be using this in a few minutes. Let me go back. Then comes the auth. You can create users manually. We'll be creating our admin user right here later. Storage and functions will not be covered in this video. Deployments, you can view all the past deployments once you connect to a GitHub project and start committing and pushing the files. Backups, you can take them in the pro plan. And lastly, some settings. In this tutorial, we only have one admin user which is pre-created. But if you have users on your app, you can enable any of these social sign-ins to help them log in through their favorite social media account. You can also choose other ways of authenticating them like magic link or phone number and so on. Okay, let's go back to the dashboard. Now to develop this app locally, instead of making database changes directly on the server, we can make use of Enhost CLI. Go to Docs, Overview, Get Started with Enhost CLI. Now Enhost CLI lets you run a complete Enhost development environment locally with all of these services, the PostgreSQL, Hasura, authentication, and all of that. Let's install this. I'm on Mac, so I'll copy this command. For Windows, note that you will need WSL2, and you can follow the steps listed below. Paste the command. This will install the Enhost CLI. This may take a few minutes. Now it's done. Note that to use Enhost, you need to have Git and Docker installed. And Docker should be running while using Enhost CLI. Scroll down and to verify that you have installed it correctly, you can type Enhost version. And I have the latest version right now. Next, we need to log in to Enhost from terminal. Enhost login. Type in your email and password. I've successfully logged in. Let me create a new directory, enhost, and cd into it. Now let's initialize our project locally with the command enhost init remote. So we get the remote project that's on enhost onto the local host and give it a name, project contest app maybe. And this is the app that I just created, hit enter. All right, this is done. CD into project contest app. And then let me open this up in Visual Studio Code using the command code space dot. Notice the nhost directory here. It contains emails, metadata, migrations, and so on. You don't have to worry about any of that right now. Let me open a new command terminal here. And the first thing we do is initialize the Git repository. So Git init creates the empty Git repository, Git add, Git commit, initial commit. Let me connect this to my repository on GitHub. So 
yeah first thing git branch main change the name and then git remote add origin and finally git push dash u origin git push dash u origin main yeah right now let's start building our ui to build this with vanilla js we need a build tool like webpack or wheat i'll tell you why a little later and i choose wheat because it's faster and easier to configure so that's the first thing we'll install so run npm init dash y to initialize the project and now npm install wheat if you open package.json file, you'll notice that wheat is installed. Let's add some scripts to run wheat. So replace this with a dev script. And the simple command here would be wheat. So this is for development and uh, just the command wheat will allow us to also watch the files as we make changes. Then uh, for production, the command is wheat build. So wheat builds our files for production and creates a distribution folder here. To view and uh, test that in local, to view the production build in local, we use preview. So wheat preview. Now close this and let's create our first HTML file, our home page, which is index.html. Call it project contest. And then create a CSS file. Let's create a folder SRC within which we create a CSS file index.css and then link this to index.html. SRC slash index.css. Now let's install Tailwind CSS. Like I said, you can skip this. And if you're skipping this, add your all your CSS into this file otherwise follow along with me to install tailwind css so let me install tailwind css as a dev dependency along with the other uh, dependencies like auto prefixer and post css once it's installed create the config file using npx tailwind css in it and i'll also create the post css config file with the dash b option there so this will create both the config files for us, postcss.config.js. We don't have to edit this. And tailwind.config.js. Now, the only change we need to make here is within the content. We need to add all the parts of the files where we are going to use the Tailwind utility classes to pick up all your utility classes and build your CSS. So the first file we will be adding is dot slash index.html. And then we will be adding some utility, utility classes in JS files a little later, which I will be putting in uh, src slash JS slash star dot JS. So that's it. Uh, we will have, we will also have an admin folder for the admin pages. So that would be in the directory admin. So admin slash star dot HTML. Right. So let me create the admin folder also and create two new files within that. One is index.html, the file where you view all the projects and then a login, sorry, login.html. Okay, I'll close these and finish the installation and setting up of Tailwind CSS first. Yeah, that's all the changes you need to make in Tailwind config. You can close this as well. And in index.css, let me add the Tailwind directories, Tailwind base, Tailwind utilities, and then Tailwind components. All right, uh, to check if Tailwind CSS is installed correctly and Wheat is running, let's simply add a h1 project contest and add some utility classes like font bold and text blue 700 maybe save the file and now let's use the command npn run dev to get our wheat running locally all right it's running this is where we can view and yes tailwind css is installed correctly that's why we're seeing this in blue 
Now, if you remember the demo I showed you at the beginning of the video, we have three pages that we have just created our index.html and then our admin index and login. Now, I'll not spend too much time creating the UI. I have created this uh, GitHub repository, which I've linked in the description below. It just has three HTML files, index.html and within admin index uh, again and login.html. Simply copy the HTML from these files and paste them into your app. If you want to make changes to the UI, you can. Uh, if you're not using Tailwind CSS, you'll have to style it yourself. All right, so I've copied the HTML from all the three pages. So now if you view this in the browser, you will have this form right here. Nothing is working yet. I have just added the input text area and then the button. And here's a link that takes you to the login page and email and password inputs with a button. And you can also view the admin slash index.html uh, because we've not yet implemented the login and logout. And here it's this is just a sample project. This is not from the database. Uh, it's just to create a UI so we can copy it from later. Right, so let's go back to our index.html and let's take a quick look at the markup that we just copied. So as you can see, we just have a header with the admin login link on the right. Then we have the H1 and then we have the form section within which we have our form with ID form. Then here's the input, title input, and then the description text area and the link input with our button type equals submit to submit the project. And then we have winner section, which is right now hidden because the winner is yet to be announced. But later what we will do is we will make both the form section and the winner section hidden. We'll first find out if the winner is selected, if the winner is already announced then we show this section, otherwise we show the form section. Now it's time to work on the backend. To start the local development server, run the command nhost up. If you see an error that port is not available, just change the port number to something else like 9697 maybe. This will start all the services that we need and once this runs successfully, you will see the Hasura console, console open up in your browser. This is our server running locally. Remember, we saw the same Hasura console from the nhost dashboard. So that is your server on nhost, while this is right here on localhost. Let me explain some things here. Like I mentioned before, nhost uses PostgreSQL database. That's where we create our tables to store the contest data but we need a query language to interact with the database, right? That's why we use GraphQL, which is a query language. And Hasura is the GraphQL engine. So this Hasura console lets you create and view tables in your database and query them using the embedded GraphIQL interface. I don't know how this is pronounced, if it's graphical or GraphIQL, I might use both in this tutorial. So first head over to the data tab to create your first table. Our database has three schemas already created for us, public, auth, and storage. Auth is where all the user related tables are created. Nhost has created all of these for us. We'll come back to this in a few minutes. Storage schema is for file storage and we'll not be using that here. All the other tables go into the public schema. So let's create a table projects to store all the projects that people enter into our website. A table name by convention has all small letters and it's plural. So it's not project, it has to be projects. Let's create some columns down here. You can select from some of the frequently used columns. We need a primary key that auto increments. So let me select primary key. Then we have our project title. The column type is text. Then we have our description, column type is text once again. And then we have our link, which is text again. And then we have, we need a column winner to 
store the value true or false. So this will be a Boolean value to show if that particular project is the winner or not. And the default value is false. True means that project is the winner. You can add other columns like created at and updated at and then add table. That's it. Our table is created. You can browse rows. You can insert a row. So let's try and insert a row right now. Let's say first project. Give it some description link. Maybe I can just say anost.io. And the winner is false. Even if you don't enter, since the default value is false, that's what it takes. Click on save. And then you can browse the row and see that uh, we have our row here. We can modify the structure, can add relationships, and then modify the permissions as well. By default, there's an admin role that is a user by the role admin, which can insert, select, update, delete, and perform all the operations on this table. So any new table that you create in the public directory, this role will be able to perform all the actions. But for your app, you need to add a role here Otherwise, you'll not be able to perform any action. So in case you have users who are signing up or using this data, you will have to add a user role. But since we are allowing anybody and everybody to insert projects into our table, we have to have either a public role or you can even call it anonymous and give it some insert permissions. So click on edit here. Allow role public to insert roles. Ideally, you will have to add some custom check, but uh, just to keep it quick, I'll say without any checks and I will allow public to add the title, description and link, not the winner and ID is anyway auto filled. Click on save permissions. Great. The public role that is anybody without login, they'll not be able to see all the projects, but they'll have to be able to select that is select is read from the database they should be able to read at least the winner once selected. So this permission I will save with custom check where winner equals true and limit the number of rows. Yes, one. So I only want the public to be able to see one project where the winner is true. And I would want the public to be able to see the winner description link and title and save permissions then for our admin who needs to be able to view all the projects and update the winner let's add a new role you can call it anything like main or something apart from admin let me call it me and uh, no need for insert permissions let me just add select permissions yes without any check and i would want to see all the rows sorry all the columns save permission and then update once again without any checks and uh, this person admin should be only able to update uh, the winner and post update check also without any checks yes save permission all right now we have our projects table ready with the right permissions but we need this me user user itself in the user table with the me role to be able to log in and perform the necessary actions for this let's first create this user not on localhost let's create this user on nhost so head over to the nhost app and open the auth uh, feature here click on add user type in any email this doesn't actually matter let me just type admin at titus.in and give it some password just uh, remember to use the same password add user and click on the user once created scroll down show roles and i want the default role of this to be me role and i don't want the user role at all save changes and notice one thing that the status of this user is unverified to change that, unfortunately, we cannot do this in nhost console. That's because obviously this email doesn't exist and it's not verified. So we can still edit this in the Hasura console directly. So open this and here go into the data tab, go into auth and users table. You will be able to see the user 
that we just created. So let's edit and change the email verified to true and save it. And now this user is also given the me role in the user roles table that uh, row exists. So this user ID has the me role. To create the same two roles in our local database, we don't have the NO's dashboard in local, so we cannot go to auth and create a new user. We will have to create these two rows manually in the Hasura console in localhost. For that, just copy this password hash from the users table because we'll want to use the same password. And you can close this up because you will get easily confused between the two consoles, uh, local and production. Close this, come to your local, make sure you're in the local server and go to auth, go to the users table, insert new row. You don't have to enter all of these, just come to email and type in the same email that you used. And then the password hash, email verified to true, and then the default role as me. Everything else, you can leave it as it is. Click save, and then browse rows. We have the user created. Now let's just copy this ID here, and go to user roles, insert row, paste that ID here, and role is me. Click on save, that's it. So we have our admin user with a me role, which can uh, you know, access the data from public as defined in the permissions here. So next, how do we use GraphQL? If you visit graphql.org and scroll down, you can immediately see what GraphQL is. Now this exactly right here is the query and this is our response. So if you just type name, you get the name from the database. If you type height, you get the height and you get the mass. And then if you scroll down, you can see that you can get multiple requests in one single query. So if you have uh, multiple tables in SQL, you will have to perform operations like join or probably query once again after getting a particular data. GraphQL simplifies that. And then, uh, yeah, you can use type system to describe what's possible. And then, like I said, we have GraphIQL or Graphical. That's a great tool. It makes it really easy to build your GraphQL queries and so much more. So we don't actually have to learn GraphQL, the structure. It's, of course, good to learn the basics, but we can construct our query from graphical tool. So I would encourage you to go to learn and at least just look up the basics and try to understand what it is. But if you don't have that much time, just know that there are two things, queries and mutations. Using queries, you can get the results from the database while using mutations is how you insert or update or delete the data, right? Now with this much basic knowledge, let's go back to our Hasura console. Go to the graphical interface and using the explorer, let's try and select all the projects. So this particular key here that you see, there's a key and there's a value. This key X Hasura admin secret, uh, if this key is passed, that means you'll be able to provide all the operations on all the tables that exist. The moment I uncheck this, you'll only see projects. So this means this is public access. So in projects, we'll be able to uh, see only the winner, right? That's why this is appearing here. But now let me enable this and let's fetch all our projects. So simply go to the projects table or whatever table you have created. Select all the fields that you want to be shown like title, description, link and winner. And just run this query. You see, you get the rows since we have only one row here there's only one row displayed now this was about query let me close this and show you what a mutation does so when you select mutation you'll be able to delete uh, like you can see insert and update and so on so let's try and insert into our projects table from here i want to be able to insert the title description link 
and yeah winner is not required and then return the affected rows column now i can either enter the title description and link directly here or use query variables now to use query variables let me say i need a i have a title variable description and then the link so you'll see there's an error it says it's not defined by the operation you'll have to define the variables right here saying title and you'll have to specify the type which is string so same goes for our description which is also a string and then our link dollar link which is again a string so now you don't see any errors and here you can give the values for to these variables so say title and say second project description link with would be just something maybe youtube.com okay and now if you run this query you'll see you'll not see the inserted data because we only selected affected rows that's all we want to see we see that it's one that means the data is inserted let's just verify clicking on the data tab go to projects and yes our second project is also inserted now let's keep this query as it is because we'll want to copy this and put it into our front end right in our, in our code because as far as i know nobody writes graphql manually these days everybody uses graphical uh, test out their queries and then copy and paste it into the code let's do the same so let's go back to our form on the index page here once we click on the submit button we want the form data to be collected and sent to the server using graphql and that can be done in javascript so add a script tag src let's create this javascript file within the js folder and call it index.js and this will be a module because i'll be using modules create this file yes create file and here select the form const form is document.get element by id this was called form and then our button is form dot query selector button then add form dot add event listener submit so on submit uh you know perform this function let's create submit form up here i'll use uh, arrow functions here submit form equals event this passes the event because we need to say event dot prevent default otherwise it will uh, try to submit the form directly through html we want to do it through javascript prevent default and here let me get the form data const form data equals new form data form and then actually get the object const form data object equals object dot from entries i don't know any of this uh you know by heart don't think don't be fooled that i write all of this every day even i have copied this from uh, you know probably some blog post or you know stack overflow form data dot entries i believe let's try this since i don't know if this will work let's console dot log form data object okay not from data yeah form data okay let's test this out uh, let me type some title new project some description and just test oh uh, we have an error form is null did i make a mistake oh yeah uh, this has to be just form because i have get element by id let's see this should work submit project yeah so we do have the object let's go back and now this is the main step how do we use graphql and send this particular object to our database now 
Nhost provides an SDK, JavaScript SDK, which you can refer in the docs. Go to docs and reference. You can see the JavaScript SDK and some details about it. This is how you install it. So copy this and let me stop this right now and install the JavaScript SDK along with GraphQL because it's needed to query. Along with that, let's also install this npm package GraphQL request because it makes it easier to make GraphQL requests. All right, uh, now refer the docs again. We need to initialize a single nhost instance. So let's create a new file and copy this code. Create a new file within the JS directory and call it nhost.js. Paste this. And notice that you need to type in your subdomain and your region here. So for the nhost app, the subdomain and region, you can find it in the overview. You can just copy the subdomain and copy the region. But for localhost, you can skip the region part and only type localhost as the subdomain. So what I'll do is I'll just comment this out and uh, paste this once again. Remove region and just type localhost. Okay, and now let me just export nhost so I can use it. In index, let's import nhost from dot slash nhost dot js. Now this is why we need the wheat build tool. To import from an npm package and uh, run this in the browser, you need a transpiler. All right, now that we've imported nhost, down here, you can do something like nhost.graphql.request and then you can send a GraphQL request to your server. So note that you need this query and then you can uh, do the request. So remember we, save the query here in the graphical interface. Yeah, simply copy that query. const query equals gql and you can paste the query here. And now let's actually make the request uh, with GraphQL using nhost.graphql.request. Here the first parameter is our query. The second one is the variables object, which in our case is form data object. And let's store the response in const data error. So we get the data if everything is successful, else we see an error. Now this is an asynchronous function, so we need to await the response. And let me just console.log data and error to see if everything is working fine. If it is, then data will have an object that says affected rows is one because it's able to insert this. So let's check, open the console, submit. Okay, we get GQL is not defined. Yes, we forgot to import GQL uh, from the package GraphQL request that's when we'll be able to do this right now this should work yes so we are able to see an object and the error is null that object is insert projects which again has another object affected rows is one so here let me remove the console.log and instead let me say if data dot insert projects dot affected rows equals one then uh you know the insert was successful of course you should do a more uh, elaborate error handling but i'm not doing that for now just to keep it quick if it is then probably call a function display success else uh, display error 
and create these two functions down here let's say const display success is uh, you know probably remove the button and instead you know, show a success message so that would be button dot outer html equals maybe add a paragraph with oh, sorry this is arrow function this is what i need to do yeah p class equals text uh, green 700 and then let's just say your project is submitted wait for the results and probably add a nice uh, fingers crossed smiley <laughs> yeah also reset the form reset uh, in case of an error display error maybe just alert something went wrong please try again later and uh, yeah that's it and while this is processing let's uh, change the button text to processing uh, where, where do we do that just before this uh, so probably within submit form we can say button dot inner html equals processing and then uh, if there's an error we'll have to change that back to button dot inner html equals back to submit project because the person might want to try again okay uh, we didn't verify if that was actually inserted so let's once quickly verify go to projects oh yeah we do have it uh, multiple times maybe i clicked on the button multiple times so let's uh, quickly delete all of these and insert once right now yeah delete okay and now let's hope this works maybe just give a proper link submit project great your project is submitted wait for the results is what we see so this part of our project is now complete now the main part is the authentication admin login and logout so let's go to the login page and try to make this work go back to visual studio code let me close all of this and open login.html here at the very bottom let's add a script sign in uh, so this would be again within the same src folder so slash src slash js slash sign in dot js and create this file create file here we again do the same thing what we did in index.js we will be collecting the form data and sending the query for authentication so much of it is same let me copy all of this let me copy until the submit form here paste it here and then uh, yeah sure i'll just say signing in and then this query will not uh, be the same we don't have to query anything i'll tell you what we need to do just remove all of this so now we do have a form and we do have the button we have the submit form function that's being called on submit and here what we do is instead of querying we have enost.auth dot sign in function where you need to just pass in the email and password and enost will verify at the back end if that user exists and returns either a you know access token or probably returns an error right so i will not be doing this uh, i'll not be calling this function here i'll create a new folder i'm sorry I'm cre i'll create a new file within the js folder and call it auth.js to handle all the authentication part uh, so instead of having this import and host here 
I will have it here and we don't need GQL because we're not using any GraphQL request here and within auth.js let me have a function const sign in and this will be uh, an async function which takes in email password and within this here let's say const session equals await and host dot auth dot sign in which takes in the email and password okay then we return the session and of course we need to export the sign in function which we then import here import sign in from dot slash auth.js yeah this is sign in on js and now we can again say const session here equals await sign in and the email and password is stored within our uh, what's that form data object so we can pass the form data object and let's just try and console.log session to see what we get console.log okay here let me open up the console type in the same email id and password you used to create your user sign in and yeah we do have some object here which yeah this is the access token so that means your user is logged in successfully once that is done what we want is our page to redirect to our admin index right so to do that here we can simply say if if session not equals null then we can redirect to i'll say window dot location dot href equals uh, let's just use some variables so i will say uh, sign in url and this can be defined here in the auth because we might want to change the url later and if it's in multiple places you will have to make changes in a lot of places right so let me just say const sign in url equals this would be a slash admin slash index dot html we'll have to export this as well sign in sign in url here let's import this along with sign in right now if session is not null then uh, redirect to the sign in url else so we don't we don't need this else we can directly say uh, you know alert incorrect email or password and then probably change the button text back to sign in right but now that uh, we have already signed in we will get an error uh, because it will say you're already signed in now how do we verify that uh, somebody let's say the admin comes to the login page and if the admin is already signed in, we will have to redirect them to index.html without even showing this form. So as soon as the admin comes into this uh, login.html, at the top, we will have to verify. So maybe we can say window.onload. Check if the user is already signed in and if the admin is redirect so we can do something like if await is signed in we are yet to create this function is signed in then do the same thing where is that yeah window.location.href signed in sign in url and let's create this function here once again in auth const is signed in equals this will be an async function because it has to check 
uh, whether the user is signed in. For this, we can use nhost.auth dot get authentication status uh, no 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 we can use is authenticated async so so it wait it, it waits for any other authentication that's already completing in the background to give a response we can use this and return await nhost uh, dot auth dot is authenticated sync and we need to export signed in url is sorry is signed in this will return true if the admin is already signed in and this still says yeah no so this has to be an async function for us to use a wait here a wait yeah so let's verify it says is signed in is not defined because we forgot to import that here is signed in and now it's already redirected to uh, the admin that's why it refreshed the page the moment i saved it that's why we're able to see that it redirected if you want to verify it again you can just say login.html and you'll see that it just got redirected now let's implement the sign out here so that the whole loop is completed of sign in and sign out so go back to go to admin slash index.html let me close these two things, even index.js, admin index.html. And here again, let's use another script, src slash js slash, let's say sign out.js. This is where we'll have our, all our sign out functions. Create this file. And once again, in our auth.js, let's create a function sign out async this could you don't need to return anything you can just say nos.auth dot sign out await right and along with sign in you'll have to export sign out url now within the sign out.js let's import the function first import sign out from dot slash auth dot js and here once the sign out uh, link is present, this is not a link actually this is a button so if you inspect uh, i have added this within a form because on submit of the form we will be able to uh, sign out the user so on click of this button let's uh, say const button const form equals get element by id sign out form we can just say form dot on uh, on submit so const submit form equals take in the event and say event dot prevent default and then this is an async function because uh, we'll have to call the sign out which is an uh, async function here you can just say await sign out and then redirect the user the admin back to the login page so once again you can say window dot location dot href and let's call this sign out url and let's define that again in auth.js sign in url is this sign out url is login.html so in case the admin is logged out we want them to uh, you know redirect to login.html i hope this is not too confusing yeah so sign out uh, url we just have to attach this event to form on submit so form dot add event listener submit submit form so if this works well on clicking on sign out this function will be called which will in turn call the sign out function 
and once that successfully completes we will be uh, redirected to the signed out url only thing is i forgot to export sign out url yes this should work we click on sign out uh nothing happened okay we have an error i'm sorry import declarations may only appear at the top level of a module which means i forgot to add type equals module here so when you see this error make sure you're not missing type equals module now it should work so click on sign out and great we're redirected to the login page so let's check if it's signing in now admin at thyrus.in password sign in it should redirect to index yeah great that's happening but we are missing just one thing here let's say we sign out and then we try to simply access index.html we're able to view the page this should not happen only if the user is signed in we should be able to view this page so at when this page is loading we should first verify if the user is signed in and only then allow them to see this otherwise we should redirect so how do we do that let's add um, let's go to index.html let's add another script here admin.js this handles all the uh, display of the projects and this button functionality and everything create this admin.js and here we will be using the is signed in method to check if the user is signed in so what we do is import is signed in from dot slash auth dot js and on load window dot on load this is an async function because we are checking if uh, the user is signed in which in turn is an async function and then let's say const uh, check equals is await is signed in and if check is true that means the user is signed in maybe that's great we can call a function uh, like you know render page or something else we'll have to redirect the user to login page because the user is not logged in window.location.href equals login.html and here let's just create this function render page just a blank function for now right and now check yeah now it's already redirected to the login page you can verify once again index.html no we're not able to see that of course it loads for a split second there are multiple ways of not doing that probably load the script at the beginning uh, anyway for this tutorial i will not worry about that let's log in now and complete the rest of the things here so this uh, project list let's actually get it from the database itself for that let's use the graphical interface in hasura to create the GraphQL query, which we can then copy. So make sure this is add new query. And here, scroll down to projects. We need to get the projects. And in projects, we need the title, description, link, and winner. Maybe you can order by ID descending or something. That's up to you. And that's it. Run this. To verify yes we're able to see all the three projects so copy this query and here within render page let's define query equals gql paste that query here and before we forget let's import gql from graphql query sorry graphql request and down here Let's send this query using enost.graphql, graphql.request, the query. We don't have any variables. And then store this in data. And let's, uh, this cannot be await because this is not async. And then, yeah, this should be await. 
now let's verify if we are getting the projects by doing console.log data open the console yes we're able to get all the three projects now let's see how do we display them here for that let's probably call a function display projects and pass it data dot projects now again uh, it's better to do some error handling here let's say if data dot projects only then uh, you know you do this but yeah of course this is just for a demo right so here const display projects equals projects now we have the array and here let's do for each of the projects projects dot for each let's say this is a project and then we have to create a div for each of the projects right so we'll say const project div equals and we can copy that from the index.html here yeah this whole thing you can actually cut it from here and add it here and let's append the projects div document dot get element by id projects dot append project div oh yeah sorry const project div that's not how it's done document dot create element div and then project div dot let's add the classes class list dot add these are the classes i want to add shadow if you're using regular css then you don't have to do this you might probably have to add a single class and then uh, i don't need this div anymore it's just only until the button and then we do project div dot inner html equals uh, this heading and uh, yeah all of these elements now this should work yeah we're able to see the same thing three times so let's change the title description and everything to that particular project to do that simply add project dot title here and then we can add the project dot description here description and then project dot link over here all right great now we see the exact projects that we submitted all right so this looks fine when the winner is not selected but what if the winner is already selected we need to first check if there is a winner and how do we do that probably let's create another function const get winner equals taken the projects and then we can simply do this using the filter array filter method so simply return projects dot filter and then project if project dot winner equals true then add that into the array else uh, don't so, so it this will return uh, you know a blank array if there is no winner otherwise it will return the array with the project as the winner so let's just do console.log get winner to see if uh, we're getting a blank array or not yeah we do get a blank array because there is no winner yet but if there is a winner we should not be able to see this button right so here uh, let's remove this button from here right here we'll say const winner equals get winner projects and here we can say if winner dot length 
equals zero. That means if there is no winner, we want that button, right? So we can simply append the inner HTML of this project div with that button project div dot inner HTML plus equals uh, whatever we had cut from before. So only if there is no winner, we should be able to see the button. And since there is no winner, we are able to see the button. But if there is a winner, we should also display that here, right? So along with display projects, let's also do a display winner. Display winner projects data dot projects. Of course, you can refactor this better a little later. Um, and here, let's say const display winner equals projects. And here, we just need to display the same uh, node, the, the same project structure, the same div structure here in the place of winner. That means we will have to duplicate this part uh, and that's not a good idea to duplicate code. So what I'll do is I will create another function here, uh, something like create project uh, div or create, create project node in the project and then it will return the HTML so I'll cut this out from here and paste it here create div maybe and this div will be returned uh, return div so I can simply call this here const project div equals call the function create project node pass in project and this will remain the same append uh, the project and now we can do the same thing here as well const winner div is create project node uh, project but here uh, it has to be the winner so here we'll say const winner equals get winner from projects and then pass in winner of zero because that's an array of uh, winners which is one winner of zero will have the exact uh, object project object which is the winner and now we'll have to append this within the winner div okay if, uh, yeah it will be winner div all right but one thing what if there is no winner right so we need to check that before if winner dot length not equals zero only then you do all of this all right so yes it uh, works as it is let's manually actually create a winner here so what we'll do is we'll go to the data projects and set one of these to true uh, maybe second project edit it set it to true now this second project should be showed as the winner let's refresh great so we do see the second project here but this needs to be removed so what we can do is um yeah we can remove the paragraph from here so winner get element by id or we can use query selector winner p dot remove yeah so that will remove the paragraph after adding the winner div yeah that looks great and now we don't even see the button because we already checked only if uh, there is no winner declared then show the button so one part of this is done now the only thing pending is to perform a function on button click that is we need to update the project so let's go back and change it to false again so that we don't have any winner announced and now on click of this button we'll have to call a function so here in admin.js we are adding this button as an inner html but we'll have to create the button node so we can attach an event listener and append uh, add a event listener that is button dot add event listener on click of the button 
we want to execute the function update winner we can call this update winner we'll create this and we need to pass it the project or maybe even the project dot id using that id we will be able to query to update the particular winner now let's create this function probably up here const update winner equals this will be an async function we need a query so we'll again go back to the graphical interface gql go back to the graphical interface here api and this won't be a query this will be a mutation instead so close this select mutation and come down to update project it's here update projects where id equals uh, we'll remove this we'll use the variable id and what do we need to update we need to set the winner as true so set winner as true where id equals this particular variable and then we just need to return the affecting rows so this uh, here will be dollar id and we need to define that dollar id here as an integer that's an int and id let's say if we say id as one or two this will actually work so copy this query and paste it here and down here let's uh, say const data equals await nost dot graphql dot request first parameter is the query and the second parameter needs to be the id uh, within an object so this is what we do id id and if everything works fine we should have the uh, data here so let's log it but i think i have made a mistake uh, one thing is we are trying to update each project by id and we are passing this id through the button right on click of the button but here this project uh, does not have the id because we forgot to include it here while fetching each project we only are we're only getting the title description link and winner we also need the project so please make this change otherwise this will not work all right now let's see if everything's fine we should be able to see that the affected rows is one so let me click here yes so update projects affected rows is one and now if we refresh the page yeah we'll see that the winner is already announced so we're not able to uh, see anything so here let me just change this to if data dot update projects dot affected rows equals one so if it's if the winner is uh, selected then probably just uh, reload the page using location dot reload otherwise handle the error in some way so let's verify so one last time let's uh, edit this data change the winner to false again and try and verify if this works select winner and great we are able to see the winner here so almost everything is done except that this winner has to be displayed on the home page also once it's announced so if i sign out and go back to home i should not be able to see this form i should simply be able to see the winner so how do we do that in your index.js uh, yeah right here the very first thing we do is window.onload we need to check if there is a winner selected already if the winner is selected display that else display the form so this part i'm not going to cover in this tutorial i'm sure you can do it do it on this own but if you cannot the final github repository is linked in the description below so you should be able to see that and do it now that we have our project completely ready in localhost it's time we build this for production 
there are just a couple of things we need to do firstly um, using wheat there is only by default there is only one entry point let me close all of these and that entry point is index.html but we have two more entry points within admin to add these two we'll have to create wheat.config.js and uh, probably google for wheat multi-page site multi-page app and in the wheat uh, docs you will find multi-page app here and just copy this whole thing from here and our main file is index.html but within admin we have admin.index and we also have a login so just add login.html also since we have three different pages now uh, this will work in production otherwise this will work in development fine but in the production it won't work so let me stop this right now and try to build the production app using npm run prod it's building for production that means it will create a distribution folder and to view what this looks like because it would have it, it doesn't look anything like this uh, you'll see that if you go in to the assets you'll see a lot of different files here because it's built for production to check what that looks like let's do npm run preview we should be able to see that there so the production app also looks great you can try and log in here you can also verify uh, all the other things like clicking of the button and everything i won't be doing that right now so this is our uh, production build but one thing is this production build is also referring to the nhost local host so if you remember in our in our js file within nhost.js we have this local host but this is not what we want in development we want the subdomain to be localhost but for production it has to be that subdomain which points to the nhost app right so what we do is this is where we use environment variables now if you see you already have a dot env dot development that uh, is already there now here we can add some environment variables which gets picked up during development and we can add another file here dot env dot production and the variables here will get picked up automatically for production that's how wheat works but we need to add this to git ignore so that our subdomain and other things are not leaked so add this to git ignore dot env dot production okay and what are the variables so in development let's add it has to be prefixed by wheat if you want to access it in other files so let's say wheat and host subdomain equals localhost because this is the development sorry not location localhost and then let's also take the region and leave it blank wheat and host region will uh, be a blank string copy the same thing into production but we will change this go to your nhost app and copy the subdomain paste it here copy the region and paste it here now we will be able to access these variables here based on the environment using import dot meta dot env dot and that particular environment variable which is wheat enhost subdomain and then the same thing for region will be enhost region and now uh, this is there this is great let's uh, stop this and build our app for production once again but before we do that let's push all of these changes to our 
enosed uh, app by pushing it to github so let's say git add so what happens is all the tables that we've created the permissions that we've set all of that actually has gotten stored in these enhost migrations that you see right so the projects table that we created with the columns and functions all of them will now if you commit to github they will directly go into the enhost app so just say git commit minus m uh, final commit git push so now if you go to the hasura console here and open it we had not created the projects folder in this remember but now we will be able to see the projects folder here with all of these and permissions also exactly as we created in the local host so that's the best part you do any changes in the cli in using enhost cli and then push it to github automatically it gets deployed to your uh, you know enhost app here you should be able to see that final commit immediately picked up from here and now let's build it once again for production sorry npm run prod All these changes are now built and now let's say npm run preview now because this is the production app it should pick up the subdomain and uh, region from the production that's why you're not able to see any winner and if you log into the admin you'll not be able to see any projects as well because that part is empty it's a production app it only takes the structure and not the data within right so now you have the production build ready if you want to host it on netlify simply go to netlify and link the distributions uh you know folder that also automatically takes in if you link your netlify account to github it will detect that you're using wheat and it will detect all the other things one thing you need to do however is set the environment variables on netlify so let me show you where to do that if you go to netlify.com login i already have this deployed i have this connected to the git repository let me go to site settings and build and deploy if you scroll down entirely you'll be able to see environment variables i've already set them otherwise you will be able to see edit variables and these two are the things taken from here now why do we need to do this because if we add these two directly in the git repository it's uh, it'll be exposed to public even if your repository is you know private it's not a good practice to put these into your git repository that's why that's the only thing you'll have to set directly on netlify and then once you deploy you'll be able to see everything working your front end on netlify your back end on enhost and everything seamlessly continuously deployed through localhost whenever you build and you just push to github it'll automatically get deployed right so there are too many things you learned in this video a lot of concepts you might have probably seen for the very first time so maybe go through this video multiple times try to build your own app try to customize this app right now and if you have any questions at all you can ask me in the comments below connect to me on twitter at shruti balasa thank you for watching hit a like and share this video ahead if you enjoyed watching this don't forget to subscribe below and turn on the notifications so you won't miss a single video from Tyrus.